invite you to rise and to face our baptismal font. We welcome you all to worship on this, the 25th Sunday after Pentecost. A few quick notes on our service, the outline and music are found in your bulletin. Uh, please remember that after worship, we will be uh, going to the fellowship hall for a congregational conversation on the 2022 budget. Please also remember that throughout this month, we are collecting coats, used, new, whatever you can come up with for, uh, for people in need. Uh, there's a bin out front, and you can uh, place your coats there, and, uh, and uh, please help uh, support those in need in our community. Finally, you may have seen in an email that I sent yesterday morning, uh, we uh, are sad to announce that our sister in Christ, Nancy Thompson, uh, died uh, early uh, yesterday morning um, after a long uh, battle with dementia. Uh, she, her family was able to see her uh, during the last couple of days, and uh, her memorial service plans are pending, but uh, we will be having a service here at St. Luke uh, sometime in the, in the coming future. Please keep you know, her and her family in your prayers. Let us prepare our hearts for worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Have mercy on us, O God. We confess that we have sinned against you and against our neighbor. We have built walls instead of tables and have turned away the stranger. We have sought glory for ourselves and have treasured that which does not satisfy. Help us to love as you love, to welcome those you send, and to treasure mercy and justice. Turn us from our ways to your ways and free us to serve those in need. God, who makes all things new, forgives your sins for Jesus' sake, and remembers them no more. Lift up your heads and your hearts. Yours is the kingdom of God.
Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
A reading from Hebrews. Every priest stands day after day at his service, offering again and again the same sacrifice that can never take away sin. But when Christ has offered for all times a single sacrifice for sin, he sat down at the right hand of God. And since then has been waiting until his enemies would be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also testifies to us. For after saying, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their heart, and I will write them on their hearts. He also I will remember their sins and their laws to no more. Where there is forgiveness of sin, there is no longer any option for sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from the evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without waver, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bears are on a bike. 
last two years have been the closest that we may get to having our lives completely upended and made it into complete and utter chaos the way that the people of Israel and the early Christians' lives were in these readings. We probably all can resonate with overnight having everything completely changed and not being able to go out or do the things that we want to do or watching all of the chaos emerging in our streets or watching all the chaos emerge as we can't get along with all of our and our governments and everything and all around us. We seem to live in this time of chaos and ask some of the similar questions where then do we put our trust? Not one stone would be left here upon another. All would be torn down, Jesus said. If you look at the four walls of the sanctuary, not one stone here will be left here upon another. At some point, someday, all will be torn down. Maybe tomorrow, probably not, unless a tornado comes through. It could be next year, it could be 10 years from now, hundreds of years from now, thousands of years from now. But this building, every building that we've ever been in, Soldier Field, any new stadium the Bears may build, the biggest, largest, strongest buildings, indeed the very earth itself, nothing is eternal. All will be torn down and eventually one day be destroyed. In the midst of this, Jesus asked, where do we put our trust? The answer, Michael, the angel in our first reading, who prophesies the words of Daniel, is that no one will be left to that the people shall be delivered, everyone whom God has called and written in the book of life. Jesus doesn't necessarily give an answer to his questions in our gospel, but he does, since chapter 13 is pointing for the end of the gospel, give an answer on the cross. That amidst the chaos, the chaos of good Friday, as Christians, we always stand at the foot of the cross, embrace and look at the death of Jesus and hope against hope in God's promise of the resurrection. We always stand at the foot of the cross and trust that God is the one bringing life out of death. That God who brought order to the chaos at the beginning of creation is now bringing order here and now and bringing life out of death. And no matter what the chaos in our world, no matter how much death and destruction there is, God's promise still rings true and God is still through Jesus raising life out of death. few moments, we will journey as a community down the hall. And perhaps it's a little chaotic as we think about the future of our church and all of the things that are unknown and that we'd like to know and about what God is planning to do and stuff. It's about the future ministry here at St. Luke. But the challenge for each and every one of us is to put our trust in that Jesus who hung on the cross. Trust that no matter what happens, no matter which way the Holy Spirit leads us and guides us, our future is in God's hands and not our own. That our future is in the God who in Jesus raises life out of death. That our future is in the God who brings order to chaos. Finally, I like the hymn that we will be singing in a few moments. It's called Through the Night of Darkness, Doubt and Sorrow. And I really, as I was reading this past week, was taken by the first verse to this. Through the
the night of doubt and sorrow, onward goes the pilgrim band, singing songs of expectation, marching to the promised land. Clear before us, through the darkness, gleams and burns the guiding light. Pilgrim clasps the hand of pilgrim, snapping fearless through the night. Friends of Christ, it's easy for us to think that we enter into these journeys, into the chaos and tumults around us alone. But as it was for the people of Israel, as it was for the early Christians, so it is for all those who gather each week around this table. We journey not alone, but we journey together as a people. We walk down that hall into the uncertainty of the future as a people. We walk out the doors of this church each week, not alone, but as a people, as a community of faith. Out into the doubt and sorrow, the darkness and the night, the chaos, singing songs of expectation, singing songs that God is raising light out of death, marching to the promised land because our faith is in the God when Jesus raises light out of death. <coughs> so we clasp the hands of pilgrims. We hold each other and step out into the night, not knowing what God has prepared, but trusting and knowing that whatever happens, whatever comes our way, our identity, our faith, our hope, and the good news of Jesus will never be changed. Amen. And now may the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O God, our God, and my Redeemer. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
love and good deeds. Especially, we pray for humanitarian service project and all social service agencies, and for all who are struggling in body, mind, or spirit. We pray for our nation, that we may be delivered to shine like the brightness of the sky, like the stars forever and ever. Especially, we pray for all people in places suffering from COVID-19, and for healing and peace in Chicago and all cities. We pray for our world, that we may trust in you amidst all the tumults around us. Especially, we pray for all people in places dealing with COVID-19, for healing and peace in Afghanistan, Ethiopia, Sudan, and all countries, and for the care of the earth and all this life. We pray for St. Luke, that we may continue to spread God's word of peace, hope, and love to everyone, everywhere we go. Especially, we pray for our conversation after worship on the future of our ministry. For Jennifer, Judy, Laura, Tim, Valerie, and Zachary, who are ill or recovered. For Bart, Deanna, Ellen, Judy, Marilyn, and Roger, who are not with us in worship. For the family and friends of Nancy Thompson, who died yesterday. And for the saints, including Nancy, who have gone before us. Lord, in your mercy. your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you all. Let's share a sign, a socially distant sign of Christ peace with one of us.
through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs>
Christ given for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Thanks be to God. Yeah.